Hi everyone, my name is Sharon and I'm from British Columbia, Canada and I'm really glad, grateful to be here at the Theological Conference this year sharing my testimony. Thank you, Carlos. My testimony is about God's forgiveness no matter how bad it all was in your past. He can heal the mind and the body like he did for me. We need to seek him and ask for forgiveness. Remember that God loves you and can restore you to peace. I made some poor decisions in my life and other people's poor choices affected me greatly and deeply. In 1949, when my mom found out she was pregnant for me, the doctor advised her to abort me because of health reasons and thankfully she did it. At the age of 14, my world was really shattered. My mother took in a boarder. My oldest brother was a policeman and said the 24 year old man was rehabilitated rapist and was going back to college and needed a place to stay. This was back in 1964 when I was very innocent, 13, 14 year old. My mother being a trustworthy person and believing that there was good in everyone accepted. And yes, I was raped. I kept it silent, only telling my diary. One day my mom found it and soon confronted the man. She went berserk, hitting him, asking him why he did this. And then she passed out and he quickly left. I thought my mom was dead and I contemplated suicide. Praise God, he intervened. Thankfully, she wasn't dead. But after I got married uh, and I was 20 years old, my mom finally died. And she never shared anything with me. So I carried the guilt, the shame throughout my life. It affected me greatly by the decisions I made, even whom I married. I didn't have any self-worth and thought it was the best I could do. I married at 19 and after a month, I knew I'd made a mistake. The only thing that saved our marriage was we joined the Worldwide Church of God. The church beliefs brought many changes in my life. No birthdays, no Christmas, no New Year's, no Easter, no makeup. The style of clothing really changed for me. My family was horrified and it separated me from them. My husband and I had three beautiful daughters. The marriage began to get very rocky. I could see my husband wasn't adjusting well to having children and the responsibilities that went along with them. He was also upset with the church and all the rules. I could see him leaving both the church and me. He didn't come home one night and that was the first out of who knows how many affairs he had had. I raised the girls on my own uh, and after about 24 years of marriage and all the emotional abuse, the tears, the unhappiness and trauma, we separated for good, sold our house and went our separate ways and the girls came with me. At the same time, Herbert W. Armstrong died and he was the head of the Worldwide Church of God and it dispersed into many different groups throughout the world. The church was my life. I believed it was the true church of God. I was shattered again and I stopped going to church. I stopped keeping the feast days and Bible studies and praying. I was lost. I was alone, so abandoned. The next two years, many different things happened. Nothing was going right. And at this time, I met an old boyfriend I had in my youth. We lived together for seven years. It was a terribly abusive relationship. Many times I thought he was going to kill me. I started drinking as to not to feel the pain of the beatings. 
It was a miracle I was able to survive. Finally, someone called the police to report that he was beating me up and uh, he went to jail and I was able to go to one of my daughters. I met someone who offered me a job as a house director for a safe house for teenage girls escaping the sex trade. It would be a 24 hour, seven day a week job, but I was able to uh, do this. I was able to have my youngest daughter who was uh, going to college at the time, university, to live with me and it was all going to be free. I worked uh, with the vice squads in four different municipalities. I taught them, uh, the girls, the basic life skills and uh, I taught them also about God and uh, being their father and Jesus, his son, and how they both loved them and would forgive them. One day in uh, 2006, a friend who was an ex-Worldwide Church of God came to me and brought the Restoration Fellowship Focus on the Kingdom magazine for me to read. I started receiving my own and student was studying and learning so much and I will say unlearning a lot. I started receiving books written by Anthony Buzzard. I was proving what I was reading and continued to change my beliefs. It was an exciting time of rebirth. Things made so much sense, especially the one God and Jesus, a human Messiah, which I always wondered about in the worldwide. I was excited about the new truths. But then I met my last husband, Bob. He was the most wonderful man. I really felt that God blessed me with a man that did not abuse me, but loved me in every possible way he could. Then six months after our marriage, he was diagnosed with colon cancer. And the next six years, I looked after him, of course, day and night. The cancer went through his body, affecting all major organs. Then in 2015, he went to hospice because the cancer was now in his brain. He died a week later. I was blessed to be holding his hand when he died. I was able to hug him and told him that I would see him when he woke up. In 2016, I moved in with my daughter and son-in-law. Now I had time to research more online. I came across Robin Todd from Scattered Brethren Network and he gave me Tracy Z's address at the Kingdom of God Missions. She had Bible studies on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, which I try to attend all the time. And I have met such wonderful Christian ladies. We actually call each other sisters. Last year, the highlight of my whole life happened. Tracy was able to come up to Canada to baptize me. Summing up my testimony, I want to say, I realized through all I went through that God never left me. I learned through my trials and we all have to do that. And we have to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior. My prayer is who are listening will seek God, our Heavenly Father, and the kingdom that I found. Pray that kingdom come. Thank you, Carlos, for this time.